Do I have time? Do I actually have time in between looking for jobs and working on my final project to do this countdown? Whew. Anyway... Out of the over 400 plus videos I've produced over the past 6 years, holy shoot, one of my favorite projects was my 2 part top 10 biotubers videos. They're not perfect, and there are a few things I would change about it looking back, but otherwise they're up in my top 10 favorite videos I've ever brought out. So, nearly 2 years later, at the request of HS Rukul Diora, thanks to him winning my last mod contest, I present to you a spiritual sequel of sorts. We've talked about the biotubers themselves. Now, let's talk about the characters we remember from their videos. Whether a video is epic or comedic, a memorable character can help make a good video into a great one, and in a lot of cases, are one of, if not THE most important aspect of any video. As with all my other countdowns, this is going to be subjective, so differences are inevitable. List your favorites down below if you wish, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. There are several rules I'd like to go over before we begin. First, and most obvious, none of my characters will be on here. I'm not that much of a narcissist. Second, I'll only be talking about one character per biotuber, so to give more variety and a chance for everyone to shine. Third, if a biotuber has a series, I'll mostly be judging these characters based on how they are in that series. As in other videos, their personalities at times can shift depending on the situation. Fourth, while a character might have more information and backstory listed on other sources outside of YouTube like the Custabonical Wiki, I'll only be considering what is stated in the videos. Because, you know, Biotube, YouTube, you get the picture. Fifth, any character from the original Bionicle storyline is excluded, as they are not original Biotube characters. Finally, this is more clarification than anything, just in case I get comments bringing up mocks. A good mock does not equate to a good character. The former is based on design and building techniques, while the latter is based on personality, backstory, likability, and how they interact with the storyline. Also, since some of these characters are part of a series, I'll give a spoiler warning right here. So, let's finish this long introduction and begin our tour. Onward! Have I ever told you the definition of insanity? Because I don't know. I lost my dictionary. What about you? Do you know? <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Gore's a character pretty much summarizes most of what BioRock Dude's channel stands for. Insanity. Honestly, while a lot of people say that Xerox Zay is a Deadpool biotube, I think Gore here took that role long before Xerox showed his face. He's crazy, likes guns, and nearly every time you see this guy, something strange happens, either around him or with himself as a cause, usually resulting in him hurting someone. And he has a grand old time through all this, and so do we. Now, other than his apparent insanity, there's not that much else to Gore personality-wise. But I think Gore has at least one aspect that helps him out. He's likable. Whenever Gore appears on screen 9 times out of 10, I'm going to smile at least a little bit, and if a character isn't deep, at the very least that character can give me a good time, which he does. The only bad thing I can say about him is that I wish there was more to him to go around, and when that's my only complaint, I'd say he did his part. Huh. That segment felt... a bit short. Um, Bootis! SOMEBODY TOUCH MY SPAGHETTI! Yeah, I got nothing. Let's just continue. So to prepare myself for this video, I rewatched a lot of my favorite biotubers and took the time to watch some videos I've never seen before, including those with a few biotubers I'm not subscribed to. I think one benefit to this is the surprises you end up finding. 
And for me, the biggest surprise was discovering La Roche. Now, other than watching a few select videos, I never subbed to IDS before researching for this countdown. I don't know, I guess I wasn't all that interested in his content. No offense. But Laresh as a character thoroughly impressed me. And thankfully, I have a lot more to say about him than Gore. Out of all the villains in Biotube, Laresh probably looks the most unassuming. He's not a power hungry Makuta like Tazuk and Varag, or an intimidating fighter like Devasaurak and Sinister. He's just a Matoran. But as a three part in massive air quotes, mind you. Jeffic episode continued to play out, it's clear that there was something more sinister going on in Laresh's mind. When we first meet Laresh, he's shown to be a very kind-hearted person, a little too kind-hearted, going from just being nice to being extremely obsessive with some odd behaviors. And when Laresh's obsessive side became more and more clear, I will admit, I actually was intimidated. Yeah, this McDonald's colored Matoran actually made me a little scared. In a way, I can almost see Laresh as a tragic villain. Other than having a pet Muaga, all of the strange behaviors he exhibits, such as buying a crap ton of meat and his mysterious job, are revealed to be mostly ordinary. The former just feeding his pet and the latter just a regular job. Maybe the characters mistook the strange behavior along with his extreme kindness for something more sinister. And after so many former friends left him, Laresh's sanity slowly eroded turning him into the madman everyone perceived him as before. It mostly comes down to my interpretation, but I think all of this makes Laresh a more interesting villain to study when compared to the ones I brought up earlier. I'm really glad I discovered his character, and it made the finale of the misadventures of Omni Pex and Pals that much better. When I made top 10 Biotubers, I said that Calatraz 100 had one of my favorite ensemble casts in all of Biotube, and I still stand by that. There are many characters I could have considered for this list. Azu, Miru, Bakas, Nikita, Vapix. Which one? Which one? Hmm. Well, how about we get a woman's touch for this? Wait. The last three characters listed have all had red as part of their color schemes. Maybe I should just change my favorite color to red. Anyway, before Azu became the official salt mock of the channel, it could be argued that Frashika was the face of Calatraz's channel, appearing in several of his early videos, including the first one. Even to this day, she still remains as one of his most recognizable and recurring characters. I think the biggest reason I enjoy Frashika so much is the humor and charm she exudes. No matter what video she's in, I always enjoy what Frashika's doing. Whether it's falling in love with a Robo Sapien, fighting off a villain, or gorging on chocolate like the fat chick she is. Yeah, extra thick she is not. A more of a simple minded character at times, she's got quite a bit of spunk to her, often leading up to the previously mentioned antics. Yet at the same time, she's so capable of kicking any butt that might happen to be in her way. Being a toe, after all, kinda makes it a given. And the expressions Calatras is oh so masterful at. Helps give this character, well, a lot of character. Nearly every expression from annoyance to love is conveyed with cartoony, sometimes over the top looks, adding charm and personality. In my eyes, this puts her above a lot of other comedically based Biotube characters, as good as they are. She's almost like a character in a Saturday morning cartoon. Not exactly the most deep of characters, but Fushika is just fun to be around. That's honestly all I really need. But she has a bit more to her that makes this character just a bit more enjoyable in my eyes. You know, I, I'm not really feeling this palace swap. Start the next number transition. I'm going to change back. For freedom, we rise. To fly, reach the sky, legend, carry. So, I'm kind of breaking my own rules here, as this next character is is from the original Bionicle canon. However, since this version of the character is so different from the original, I think I can comfortably call him a separate character. With all that being said, let's talk about JELLY! Oh dear gosh, not again! Oh 
Oh no! You're not ruining another one of my countdowns! I tried forgiving you by letting you cameo in some of my other videos, and this is the thanks I'm given! I couldn't help it. I heard my name and I simply had to come. I'm sensing some bull with that statement. Hey, I know a lot more about me than even you. How about we talk about the segment together? Then I'll just walk away. How does that sound? <sighs> Fine. So, yes. Since HBOT247 slash Jaller is amongst my favorite biotubers, I feel like I should give credit to the man himself, as he is pretty much the one that makes his videos so good for me. Why, thank you! Thank me later. So, personality wise, Jaller is an imbecile. And yeah, while he is often a nice, if not kinda whiny guy, his stupidity is his most defiant aspect with not much else to him, including no development. In some ways, you could call him one note, but at least in my opinion, that single note can be played very well on just about any instrument. I don't recall any instruments back at H Bosch House. I'm only speaking in. Ugh, never mind. My stupidity can work well in a number of situations, resulting in many different adventures. Looking after kids, going to the eye doctor, singing a beautiful song, and much, much more. Yes, it is quite impressive how flexible one's dim witness can be, resulting in a variety of unexpected and pretty hilarious jokes, especially when working off the other characters. Keep in mind, I only find them humorous when I'm not the victim of a stupidity. You asked visually impaired me to say what certain objects are, and I'll give wildly incorrect answers. You tell me a word I don't know, like gravity, and I'll go crazy with it. You hurt me and... I get hurt. I do not miss those days. Like Gorin for Sheikah, I enjoy Jala more for his likability rather than character death, which again, I don't consider a bad thing in any way. And all in all, this creates the very best character in all of Biotube. Um, uh, that's debatable. Now this list is opinionated. Oh, well, this creates Shade's favorite character in all of Biotube. Actually, only my second favorite. Can you please let me enjoy the moment? How long will that moment be? Until the segment's over. Well, alright then. Huh? Oh, wait! I'm ready to have my moment! Oh, come on! Now, before we get to number one, I'd like to include a few honorable mentions. Guys, I I'm being serious. The fact that most of the mocks being listed in this countdown have red in their color scheme is purely coincidental. Trust me on this. You may have noticed a reoccurring theme that I enjoy characters who are likable. Honestly, if they make me laugh or smile, whether it's by a quirky personality, word, antics, or a mix of the two, it's easier for me to like them as a character and have them stick out in my mind. But I also enjoy characters with a bit of depth to them, as hidden by the resh. So for number one, let's combine the two of them together, and the resulting cocktail is... <coughs> what? Wait, we already had Deadpool on this list. Oh, and the other one. Yeah, Minimac is a representative on this list. Who was honestly surprised? Oh. There's your prize, I guess. Anyway, I should preface that I'm only talking about Zarek Zay from Fight for Endworld and Hearts of Vengeance and will not be considering Legacy of Vengeance since that is partially my own project, and feels a bit like cheating. But even without that handicap, Zarek would have still gotten the top spot. He's got many, and I mean many of the characteristics I enjoy in a character, but one step at a time. First off, he has plenty of memorable moments that would make anyone either excited or smile, and lets him stick out like he's the best sore thumb you've ever had, if that could realistically exist. Whether he's making a not-so-eloquent speech or kicking the crap out of his opponents, more often than not, he's entertaining in some sort of way. Heck, Maniac himself was able to construct an entire countdown based on what his audience thought were Zarek Zay's best moments, and that's saying something. And all of these moments come down to Zarek's personality. 
Michael Gore is arguably the first Biotube Deadpool, Zarek still has his share of the pie. He's certainly a psychopath, heck, he even says it himself. This is shown in several moments, such as when he rips the character's head off and talks to it. Yet, he's more than capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with many different beings in Max Universe, and while sometimes that might require the extra power of an interdimensional being, that's not to disregard his regular combative abilities. And while he certainly enjoys being the snout of his opponents, he's not a simple-minded killer who just shoots and saps his victims. He's smart enough to know how to access and manipulate the battle in his favor whenever needed, and can have somewhat intelligent conversations with others, and in the end, he actually develops a little bit, gaining some of his sanity back and actually giving a darn about protecting the few people he cares about. I think it also helps that of all the characters in Max's videos, Zarek is one of, if not the character we spend the most time with, getting to know him and enjoying all of his antics. Out of all the characters in media, there are certainly those who are much deeper and much more interesting, but of all the characters on Biotube, Zarek is the one I enjoy watching through all of his adventures the very most. And with Max's new series, I hope to see even more of the psychopath. I'm Shade2000, and... <laughs> Can I get my moment now? <laughs> ah! oh. oh, at least it's been years since something like that has happened to me. <laughs> and I forgot just how fun it is. I'll see you next time, everyone. Godspeed.